During this video we're going to start the Fast Track script editor for the first time, import the trial license key and work through the six or seven screens of the getting started wizard. The installation process places an icon on the desktop which you can see there so let's just double click that to walk through what happens the very first time you start up Fast Track scripting host. The icon's called the Fast Track script editor and uh, it fires up an IDE or integrated development environment and that's what we use for preparing scripts. First time through you've got to add a license key file which you've downloaded as part of the download and installation process and there's also a few screens uh, involved in a getting started wizard. So here's the window that's asking for a license key file and I have one already the trial key file that I downloaded so let's click the button there And there's the license key file, or the trial key in this case. Open that. Click to agree with the terms and conditions. And now our product is licensed for 45 days. And now we have the FSH getting started wizard. So this is just a few screens just to introduce you to the product. So I'll just quickly walk through these. We won't spend a great deal of time on them. The first one talks about commands. And commands are the main building blocks for getting things done in FSH. Typical examples, connect, share, show message, create user, send mail, etc. Everything else in FSH is there to support commands. Functions. Uh, these provide a general way for you to retrieve specific pieces of information, or a specific piece of information that the system, that your computer system already knows about. Uh, such as currently logged on user, the computer name, user's profile path, home directory, home folder. So functions are a great way for providing details to your scripts so that you can personalize your scripts or you can take action based on the information returned. And you'll see examples of that in just a second. Boolean conditions, there are two types of conditions. Boolean conditions are true-false, as you would expect. Um, Operator conditions are equal to, not equal to, less than, greater than, etc. Um, by using Boolean conditions, you can make your scripts almost as easy to read as English sentences. For example, if I say if portable and not user once a day, then portable is a true-false condition and once a day is a true-false condition. And putting the not in front of it means if it's not true or false. So by saying that, if portable and not once a day, what I'm saying is if it's a portable machine, i.e. a laptop, and this has not already been done once today, then go do it. So that's an example of using Boolean conditions. And operator conditions are simply the equal to, not equal to, less than, greater than, that type of thing. So, and there's a lot going on behind the scenes with conditions. Um, including type conversions for these comparisons, but that's all handled by FSH. The next screen, collections. Collections are similar to functions in that they retrieve system information using general names. However, collections involve more than one piece of information. So you end up with a list, or if you're a programmer, you end up with an array. And once a collection is available, you can work through it using iterations such as while, for each, or even loop. There's a loop end loop uh, construct. So iterations take one item of a collection at a time, do some work with it, then move on to the next item until the collection's finished. Variables and quotations. Uh, variables are simply placeholders that you define as the script writer, and then you can use that variable during script execution. So you can define a variable at the start of a script, have the user enter information into it, and then use that information later on to take action. But like a function, except that variables can contain anything, not just system information. And quotations, or quotation I should say, uh, that simply is used as in the last example here, which I'm highlighting or pointing at. So if you've got lots of spaces, then surround your sentence with quotation marks. Executing scripts, there are two ways to execute scripts, or two main ways. Simply press F5 with the script up and displayed, or you can compile a script into an executable program, a .exe program, then double click that program. Those are the two main ways. There's another way there whereby you can um, make sure the license file and the engine are available and then just launch the engine with the script name after it. 
which means you need three things, the script file, the engine and the license file. And that's all the screens that are involved in the getting started wizard. You can access it again through the getting started uh, item on the help menu. And just a, there's a quick tip there about the context helper, which appears underneath the script window and it just gives you information about the line you're currently highlighting. So let's finish that. And you can see there the makeup of the editor. And we do in fact have a uh, menu and a script uh, line across the top here, similar to the uh, Microsoft Office ribbon. That just has all the menus and uh, icons in it. Over to the left we have the engine browser. That's where all the commands, functions, conditions, etc. are contained and you can search that using the F9 key. At the top and in the center, or not at the top but underneath the ribbon, in the center is demo script.fsh. That's open by default when you first open the window. And you can press F5 to run that script. And then below that we have the context helper which just explains what's going on there. So let's just run the demo script by pressing the F5 key just to have a quick look at a script and some of the graphic capabilities of it. And there we have the splash screen and now we have a show message screen. So let's click OK in the show message window and there's an example of a small splash screen down the bottom and this is a list menu so let's select one of those click OK here's another list menu let's select another one click OK and we'll cancel out of that one now I can enter my name at this point so that's take, taking some information into a variable from the user and here's another show message box click OK there and this is an example of a progress box that you can put up for example if you're installing a um, program. Now if you run this demo script then it won't, it's not actually doing anything, this is simply for demo purposes as it says there in the message. And it's just an, This demo script is simply to give you an indication of the things that are possible in FSH. We can show a web page and this is going out to a live website which is the uh, fast track main web page, home page. We'll just wait for that to come up. So there's the Fast Track homepage, and you could have this referring to an intranet homepage or any other web page. And there's an example of some of the icons available. And I could uh, double click any of these to launch that particular thing. Uh, there's a document behind that using SyncDir, another document behind there. Um, and we could exit simply by double clicking that and that brings up the demo script again. So that's just a quick look at what will happen the first time you start the script editor.